Hey there, everyone. How's it going? Happy glorious 2020 and almost ending into 2021. Let's talk about payroll and let's talk about California. This is the uh, this is a payroll application in Microsoft Excel that can work for any small business in any state. And I am preparing it for 2021 right now. And I'm going down the list of all the states and I'm finding states that have already released their 2021 rates. And what we have is basically something that looks like a pre-release, but is supposed to be the final numbers. So these are the, the estimated deductions, and everything, and the methods for calculating California state tax. I have done it last year in 2020 or this year in 2020. These are the new updated rates for 2021. Hopefully it won't change and hopefully I won't have to update a new video for this. So this video should be good for 2021. So I figured let's go over and talk about California and everything you need to know if you're running a business in California, even though this file has a lot of cool things in it and is going to be functional in all 50 states in the District of Columbia, we only need to care about for this video, California. So let's start hiding some things for other states that we don't care about. Because when you get this version for your business in California, you're not going to care about these other states, unless you have employees in those other states. So getting rid of a lot of other things here to hide stuff for you so that you don't have to be clogged up. These are all of the different states and information that you might need in the, in the full version. This is a little bit cleaner for you. And so what we're seeing here is that if you're in California, you need to gra uh, gather some information from your employee uh, and enter it in here. I have some fake names of people and you got to ask, you need to really have them fill out a W-4, a current year, which is going to be like 2020 or 2021 W-4. Um, because there was an old bunch of W-4s where they used to have allowances and stuff. So if you answer the question, no, you didn't give this person a current W-4, it's going to ask them for number of allowances on their old W-4 from, from before 2020. And you would put it there. But try to get everybody on a new W-4 now. Like it's been over a year. It's time to get people, even if they're not you know, being hired this year, to get them a new W-4. Are they married or not? What state are they in here? And when they're in California, just a couple states we're talking about, there's a Form DE-4 that your employee also needs to fill out. This is a Form DE-4. They're going to click their status here. Now notice there's a married with two or more incomes and a married with one income. So this is if you've got the old traditional, you know, father works and there are four kids at home and the wife and nobody and nobody ever leaves that home. That's for this married one. They're different rates. So a lot of people that are married are doing dual incomes, especially in California. So because <laughs> it's expensive to live there. So a lot of times people are going to be clicking that one, but that's that's the difference there and what that means. And of course there's head of household also. Now the um, number of allowances you're going to put right here and then there's an additional allowances where you can go through these additional worksheets. I don't know how often that applies to people, but if they do fill it out, they're going to have a number here and a number here. And the way that that gets translated back into the payroll file is the line one allowances, like I said at the beginning, and then the additional allowances from line two would go here. I imagine a lot of people have zeros on this additional allowance, but who knows? I mean, it, it depends how, how in depth people fill that out. So. What happens is, is uh, you, you pick those allowances from line one on the DE4, or the allowances from line two there. They're already in California, so you don't need to touch anything here because this is doing the same state. This is for unemployment. If they, if they work in a different state but live in a different state and unemployment insurance and state tax are in different states, then perhaps you might have to change this, but usually it's going to be the same. State filing status. So this is special to California. They have these four different filing statuses and they end up resulting in different uh, exemption amounts and different reductions from taxable wages. So you have to choose which one it is. As I was mentioning, there's the married with two incomes or married with one income that you might need to make sure you get right. Then over here, this is information for their W-4, their federal W-4. So there are questions on the W-4 and these are the line items and you need to answer whether or not they check the box on the W-4. I have done a whole video on the W-4 and I won't go into too in depth in it now because this is really more about California. But you would fill out this information on the W-4 and we'll see if that gets updated in 2020, 2021 because I don't believe they have sent out the final federal information for 2021 yet. They're guessing but it's not finalized yet. So 
Uh, if you have an unemployment insurance rate sent to you by the state of California, you would put it right here. The first $7,000 of wages were taxable in 2020, and that may be the case again in 2021. I haven't checked yet. Now, uh, this is all the employee information that you need. Um, there's other things off to the right, maybe specific to your business, but this is really all you need once you get your employee information in here. Now, you can enter in your hours for your employees by choosing a name in this daily entry sheet and putting the date and then putting the number of hours for the day. Or you could consolidate everything if you don't want to do things by daily hours. And I know that a person who's asked me to do this video uh, tonight uh, was talking about making mistakes and they don't want to do things by daily hours. So let's talk about easiest ways to not make mistakes when you don't want to mess with a daily entry sheet and you just want to mess with a pay period record sheet. And then we'll talk about how California tax is calculated. So in the pay period record sheet, this, this is kind of like the master sheet and, and database for all the pay period records for every employee. You're looking at a version where we're paying this employee every week. Uh, play, the business pays all employees every week. So there's a bunch of different pay periods here. And there are hours that came in automatically from this daily entry sheet. If you don't want to use the daily entry sheet, though, you could say, oh, well, their regular hours for the week are 35. You know, and you can just type right over that. Their overtime hours were none, and they didn't have any hollow. You could do all that stuff and type right over these formulas. It's always possible because um, this will just become the sheet that you use for that. You can put amounts for bonuses or salary amounts right here. You can put the hourly rate, um, which will it will tell you if you have if you don't have an hourly rate where you have hours for the period. It shows up in red because it's telling you, hey, you need to put an hourly rate in here, right? Uh, so anyway, there's all these things for different type of deductions. Every business has different things, but this file can handle all of it. If it doesn't have it already, we add to it. Now, let's talk about California. So, of all these different states, Alabama, look how many formulas for Alabama. Arizona is really easy. Arkansas has a few, and here we are in California. So the way to calculate California tax is to annualize the wages. So you're looking at what the wage, the gross wage amount, gross pay amount, you know, before any taxes or any deductions or anything out. What's that gross pay amount um, subject to federal tax essentially? And what status is the person in? And annualize that amount and take out their uh, deduction allowance amount. That's what you're supposed to do here. Is you're supposed to remove the uh, you're going, to, you're going to remove some amount from their taxable income. You're also going to check to make sure that they're not in this low income exclusion. If they, it, depending on their status, if they make less than 15 grand or if they make less than 30 grand, then you don't have to tax any of their money. So it's kind of doing a check to see what is the person's wage level first and then start doing formulas. You deduct a thousand out because we're doing, we annualize their wages. So you're going to deduct a thousand out for every one of their additional withholding allowances. That was line two on the form DE4 that they filled out. And then you're going to end up taking this amount, this, this uh, standard deduction amount off their income depending on their status and how many allowances they have. So that is doing that right here. And this is looking at whether or not they, they qualify for the low ex income exemption or not. Then it just does this tax rate basically. Uh, it's, it's a nested if formula and the formula that it's, that it's uh, emulating is this formula right, what did I do with that? This formula right, all these formulas right here, it's, it's looking at the annualized wages and it's taking this stuff right here on the left here and, and it's saying if the income is below this, do this to it. If it's below this, do this to it. And it's just putting all that stuff in a formula so that you don't have to. That's what I did tonight for an hour or two was cleaning up all these formulas for the year, making sure that they're right and typing them all in and that, in that it's just a big nested formula that's really annoying. Um, and you have to do it for married one income or head of household. And then you have to add back some credits depending on how many allowances they had right here. And then divide the, by the number of pay periods in the year. And this is what you get as tax withheld. So you can see like in the second pay period, the person's annualized wages were only $10,999 and the low income exemption is $15,000. So they made less than that. So they had no tax withheld in the second pay period here. All of this stuff that we just did, all these formulas that are, that are figuring out the tax, all end up rolling in and, and just being done. So, so as soon as you enter in your information here for your employee, you just go to the pay stub and you change pay stubs around. You know, this is, this is that second period where they have no California tax withheld, right there is the zero. But in the first period, they do have California tax withheld and it's $37. 
And you can also have fun with changing people's statuses and changing their withholdings. Like if this person wasn't married one income, but they were married with two or more incomes, you could go back to the pay stub and see that now they're only getting $19 out instead of getting, oops, getting uh, $37 out because it does different things to your tax rate. So, so here's where the pay stubs are, and, and you can actually print this on a check. You can line it up and print it on a check if you want to do that, but I recommend electronic payments and filing because you can also create an electronic upload, which is much easier for this. Then you have federal and state forms, and we have reports that are really automatic. You can just kind of look by quarter or look by month or look by pay period, and things just kind of pop up, and your people, all, all their information pop up. You can look over here. This is the state of California. Uh, it's going to show you you have state disability tax, which I believe is one point something percent or something in here as well. So this is figuring into your California forms. You're going to have an unemployment form for the end of the year when this becomes 2021's form right here. Um, and uh, you also have a uh, the quarterly 941 that you file with the government. This thing populates itself automatically, even though it's not doing that right now. That's because I'm working on it. But it's the same information as right here. It's emulating all this information from your 941, which is generally a quarterly report. This is what you would owe for the quarter. Uh, and, and you also have a Schedule B to that, which shows you if you, if you have more employees and you pay more money and you have to deposit every uh, every at the end of every pay period within three days usually, this is where that's going to populate automatically as well. If you're an agricultural or farm producer, this is a 943 for, for special filing for that. Uh, and then we have different pivot tables, which can be totally uh, crazy as, as you want them to be to organize all your data and chart everything. And it just, you basically have a data cube right here with everything you need. So you can really do anything you want with this file. It creates W2s right here so that you can enter your W2s in with uh, SSA.gov with the business services online. This is a W4 simulator for people to simulate W4s. So, it does a lot of things. Um, you're looking at, at just the California part, but this thing is fully going to be fully functional with all 50 states and District of Columbia. And it's really going to be something to see and compare across, you know, when you have like 50 or 51 things in here. Well, actually, eight of the states have no state tax, so you could, you could get it all in 50 employee slots here. But anyway, that, that's the basic rundown of how you do California tax rates. And um, everything that goes into it that I should mention about state disability. State disability, let's just do SDI just to show because it is something that generally comes out in California. Um, it is California, da, 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 let's see here, it's 0.01, it's 1%, it looks like on gross wages, is what it is. Um, so that just comes out as well. And also, there's some new laws, it looks like, in California, and I was looking at uh, the fact that there's a lot of people need to become employees now as opposed to the independent contractors. So I'll be working with these forms and getting a DE9, which really you're going to be filing this automatically online. So it'll be a uh, export, a CSV file probably that you'll upload to do your electronic filing if you don't want to do it by hand because you have a lot of employees. And there's a D9 and D8. So these are other things in California that will become functional in the file as it gets developed throughout 2021. So California, yeah, the tax rates are pretty high if you're making a lot, a lot of money. You know, if, if we if we have this person making, instead of a $300 bonus, how about, let's give them a $287,000 bonus in period two and show you how much tax, what the tax rate does. Yeah, it's actually... It becomes a lot, right? It's forty-one thousand dollars if you were to do that. So they, they will tax you up. The rates get get up to the eleven or twelve percent or something like that when you start to average out a million dollars a year or more. So depending on your income, yeah, it's true. I can see why Elon Musk and uh, and Joe Rogan have moved to Texas. There's no state tax in Texas. If you look at the file here, Texas doesn't have any state tax. If you change this person to Texas, <laughs> watch what happens. Go back to that pay stub. All of a sudden, they just save forty-seven thousand dollars. Right? <laughs> right? That, that $168,000 check in California was was a $124,000 check. So that's kind of an interesting way of looking at it. So anyway, that's California. I'm going to keep chugging along and getting all the states done. They're going to be done before the end of the year, so this thing's ready for January 2021. 
So good luck to everybody. A payroll should be easy, so make it so.